Out of the shed, it has been six months of work uh, and we've now got two days uh, on the quay waiting to launch and go round to Gosport so we can get the keel on. And the boat's empty. Um, it's incredible kind of how quickly everything came together in the last week. And I was down on Thursday and it didn't look like <laughs> we were ready to come out of the shed. But now everything's gone, everyone's gone. Um, and there's a little chance for me to show you some of the work that we've done um, before everyone piles back on again to fit the foils. So starting in here, um, the major work that's been done in this area of the boat is um, on the ballast tanks. Now because uh, of the size of the new foils and uh, the writing moment that they are going to provide, um, we don't need as much water ballast. So we have cut the water ballast tanks um, by about a third, just over a third. Um, so down this way, you can see the cut has been made here. So this tank used to go all the way back. The cut's been made here and we've just got um, a void there. A uh, little interesting for me, so we're going to have to work out a system of me smoothly getting things like sails over that gap because any hard edges make it difficult. Um, and the other thing that we've done with the water ballast system is we have linked the filling mechanism um, for both the aft tanks and the forward tanks. So here is the scoop and I used to use the forward scoops to fill the forward tanks and then I had two scoops in the aft um, cockpit as well uh, to fill the aft tanks. Um, now it wasn't a great system, I had a lot of problems with it. So now we have put some extra piping in that goes from these big pipes here all the way to the back of the boat and we're only filling the ballast tanks from the forward scoops which I hope will be a big improvement. Um, next thing uh, I'm quite excited about this. So over here, um, we haven't quite finished uh, installing it yet, but this is my hydraulic rake pump um, for the foil rake. Um, now, previously, this was mounted on that forward bulkhead, which was a bit of a pain for me, kind of whenever I wanted to change the rake on the foils, I would have to go all the way there um, and then I couldn't really see the instruments well. So moving this to within reach of the cockpit is really great. Um, and also just kind of having everything a bit more accessible. So previously valves and the pump, and the reservoir were all on the back side of the bulkhead. Now I've just got everything in one place, which should really help. Um, you'll see down here, We've got some extra ribs, so throughout the boat, we've got a lot of extra structure. Um, so we've built it in here, and then also all the way back, we've got these extra ribs. Um, so the guys from Carrington Boats have had some pretty unpleasant working conditions right in the back of the boat, under the cockpit, squashed in there gluing extra bits in. So the idea with this is that um, the, the foils, obviously they're going to give us extra power, but they're also twisting the boat as well. Um, and so we've just needed to put in a framework of extra structure to ensure that the boat stays really solid um, when all of that extra power is put into it and when it's slamming over the waves. Um, so over here we can see all of our new electronic setup, which is so exciting to see. Um, when we took over the boat in 2021, um, we knew we needed to do a major haul, overhaul on the electronics 
And actually last year we kind of started to change things um, and then map out what we wanted it to look like. Uh, and way back in January, we assembled all of, we'd already kind of defined the architecture of our system when we assembled all of this in a lab and bench tested it. Um, and so now kind of to see it all installed on the boat is fantastic. And, and all of our wiring and junction boxes have just been cleaned up. And this is a, a system that's going to be much easier for me to work with. Um, and for my team to kind of remotely diagnose problems because we installed it all. The big change here is that we have gone to digital switching. Um, so that basically means instead of having a control panel with um, physical switches on it, uh, I've got a, a screen and I, it's a touch screen and I just turn instruments on and off um, using the touch screen. Um, there is a fail safe for that, so, so if my touch screen goes down for any reason, then I can still, through the actual boxes here, manually turn things on and off. But the great thing about this is I should be able to access the switches from multiple locations around the boat and really easily see when things are off and on. Um, we've made a couple of upgrades, um, so we've got a new um, B&G processor for our backup processor. Uh, we're remaining with our Pixel um Exocet system for the main processor and for our pilot overlays. Um, we've upgraded our main GPS, um, but also uh, we've got several backups for GPSs and compasses. We've been working with B&G to make sure that we've got redundancy across all of those elements, the GPSs and the compasses, um, so that I can very easily switch between systems. And then the other thing we've done is we've moved our SATCOMS systems um, to this bulkhead as well, taking them out of the centre of the boat. So this might kind of look complicated, but to me, it's way superior to what we had and, and much easier to understand. But the really big difference down here is, is this bit here, and I, I can't believe how different the boat feels. So behind me here, these are the foil cases for the new foils. So they are slightly further forward than the old foils were. The cases are much, much bigger. Um, we've cut these holes out of this bulkhead. So previously this bulkhead was completely covered. And I actually used to climb through this hole here to get to the front of the boat. Now, inside there, that's just a void. So that's a sealed compartment that's completely empty underneath the foil case. And while I'm sailing, I will have a hatch covering that and I'll just occasionally take the hatch off to see what's in there, but nothing going on there now. So my main access to the front of the boat is through this really big hole here. And it's, it's actually made the boat feel so different. When you go on to the 2024 generation boats, they're all kind of completely open like this. And so, you know, I very much have that feeling of this feeling like a newer boat now with that, with that difference. Um, when I'm sailing, I'm not sure how I will ha have this, this um, uh, set up. There will be watertight bulkheads that fit in here because it still has to remain a watertight area. So I'll have hatches that fit in here, but actually it's quite handy to be able to see through to the front of the boat. Um, I guess the only thing is when it's super cold, I might want to make this compartment a little bit um, smaller. Um, so let's just climb through now and then we can have a look inside the foil cases. 
right now we are inside the foil case and there are so many reasons why this is exciting um, because to have this sort of access so the foil is is only it is only has this cord so it's only this wide um, so there's a lot of room inside here which means that I can get in and out to to manage it and to check it very easily um, but being able to kind of see all of this now before the foils go in it means that in my head I've got this really clear picture of how it all should be um, so we're looking at here this beautiful piece of engineering it really is beautiful is our upper bearing um, so this as the foil this basically guides the foil into the boat um, and there's a couple of things we can do with this so it rotates slightly as the foil comes into the boat just to kind of keep the foil in in position relative to the bottom bearing and then the other thing is here this this bit here this is our rake ram so when we rake the foils we're changing their angle to in relation to the front of the boat so effectively we're moving the foils like this forwards towards the front of the boat and you're allowed five degrees of movement um, and so this ram here pushes the bearing forwards or aft so it's just the inside bearing the outside bearing remains where it is uh, and that will then angle the foil tip either forward or aft. So it's just really nice to be able to see this. And then the other thing we can see is our system for getting the foils in and out. Um, so we have, uh, we're working with a, a, a system of ropes, so I have to manually pull the foils in and out. Um, so there's one, rope uh, attached to the top of the foil that will basically just kind of pull it in this way and then to pull the foil out we have a, a pulley a, a block and tackle system that kind of will, will grab the back of the foil and pull it um, out towards that gap and that system starts on the foil and then goes down and then comes back up over this block here and then exits out through the deck and it's run along the deck um, so here just in here I can clearly see where the holes are so obviously this none of this area here is watertight there's water in here all the time um, but the access the viewing is absolutely incredible I'm just I'm so happy with this um, it's gonna be brilliant we're now in the forward section of the boat and you can see the other end of the hydraulic ram here um, that will move that foil bearing fore and aft to give us rake. Um, this bulkhead, this is completely new. Again, that's providing that extra rigidity, that extra structure um, to guard against the twisting moment of the foils and, and ensure that the boat is strong enough to take that extra power. Um, makes my life a little bit more difficult when I'm moving sails around. So if I have got sails in the bow, um, then now it's gonna, now gonna be <laughs> a bit of a struggle to get them between these bulkheads. And I think I'm gonna need to create a system um, to enable me to lift the sails through the boat in that way. So. That's something we need to work on during the year. Um, so this tunnel here, this was always here. This carries our um, tack lines and furling lines from the deck up forward down through. Um, and then finally, um, we've got our hatch. Previously, the hatch was on the center line. Um, but we've had to move it forward because of this bulkhead here and off to one side. We couldn't have it on the center line um, anymore because obviously if it was here above the tunnel, it would just drop straight down onto the tunnel and we wouldn't be able to get anything up and down. So we've moved the hatch over to one side. Still not the biggest area in the world to post a 
300 square meter fail down, but um, I'm sure we'll find a way.